Good morning, traders. It's Monday, December the 23rd. Taking a look at the charts, we got the SP500. You can see on here, we've got uh, the market continues to run higher. Now, this is the uh, SP500 daily futures. So this is what the chart looks like in um, a 24 hour chart. Nice steady kind of trend and, and kind of rises. Now, if we go to the SP500, which shows us only a third of the trading day, it tells us uh, where the money has moved during high volume times. If you look at this chart, you can see how much choppier it is and how the market just kind of grinds its way higher. It more or less trades sideways for several days and then has a pop and then trades sideways for several days and a pop and chops sideways. It's just this kind of really ugly grind. And that's what makes trading difficult when uh, if you're trying to pick a top, it looks like it, con it constantly wants to top out. But the trend keeps going higher. That's why you got to follow futures because futures really are. The, the core underlying asset and you want to follow that and then you trade ETFs based on more or less the futures. Uh, now if we go back to the SP500 and we look here at the cycles in the bottom. Now when all the cycles are in the upper zone here this means we're in a power zone. It means uh, when the pink line is up here uh, that's when the market is very strong and what we're looking for eventually is for when the pink line starts to rotate down that's when we start to get uh, the market getting weak and we start to see some type of collapse and we'll usually see the shorter term cycles start to make lower lows and lower highs now uh, we started to see that over here where the market pulled back our pink cycle started to turn down and we had some lower lows on our short term cycles while the pink cycle was just about to break down and obviously we had uh, good economic data come out and buck the trend the market was primed and ready for another correction but strong data uh, created a big pop and now we're back into this power zone and just muscling our way higher uh, we're into this holiday kind of push now volume should be relatively light that favors higher volume or higher prices and uh, we're just going to let the market keep doing its thing which uh, we are long and we're just letting it continue to go higher now, if we take a look over at um, bonds, let's take a look at the safe havens, the risk off assets here, here are the risk off assets. And if you take a look, we're testing this red line. This is the 200 day moving average. We'll zoom, you can zoom out a little bit more here. If you take a look, whoops, you can see how we've had this huge rally in bonds. We're pulling back with this really uh, complex correction of one, two, three, four, five, more or less five waves to the downside to the 500 day or 200 day moving average. And this previous significant uh, uh, bull flag and breakout zone, which also happens to be these highs over here, this whole consolidation here where the market carved out a big bottom in 2019, 2018, 2019. Eventually, I think we're going to see the equities market start to uh, roll over and we're going to see bonds take off, much like uh, this is a pattern similar in gold and silver and miners, but it's just not there yet. Let's take a look over at precious metals. Gold up a third of a percent today. It's got this big bull flag like uh, bonds. It's been flagging down. It's showing some signs of strength. It's trying to hold its ground and move higher here. We're finally above the five day, the 20 day and the 50 day still testing under or trading underneath these pre previous pivot lows or pivot highs. Sorry. Uh, overall, where the market is in this late stage where it could be somewhere like right over here or over here where it's in the late stages of a bear flag and it really needs to break out with uh, conviction and hold for more than a day or two. Uh, we've seen pops in the past where you get a, a pop and it looks like a new move to a new high and then it sells off. It holds up with a strong move but then eventually fizzles out. We've seen this happen over and over. If we look at silver as well, silver's got similar type of price action where it has a big pop and then sells off, moves up, looks like it's breaking above these highs here. It holds up for a little bit and then fades back down. And we've, we're seeing the same thing again. We're just starting to push up above this high and we're distance wise from here to here is very similar from here to here. So it's a very similar timing wise cycle wise in terms of the market needs to get up here and hold or really start to extend and break out to, to break this downward cycle. There's multiple cycles moving down here that's holding the price down and uh, it's on the verge of rolling over again unless it can really buck the trend and have a big impulse wave to the upside. If we look over at gold miners, they took it on the chin last trading session, big down day, back down to the 20 day moving average. Overall, though, it's still holding its price range. It had a rally up. 
it broke this high, it broke this high, and now it's just kind of trading sideways, consolidating in here, and it's trying to build this launch pad. And to me, it feels like we've got a rounding formation, and it's on the upswing. It's just a matter of time, I think, before it pops in rallies. But we do need to see it break out. We need to see metals as well start to uh, firm up a little bit more and start to break out, and we'll see how things shake out here going forward. Looking over at energies, natural gas down 5% this morning. It's still trying to carve out this bottom. Our cycles are still in this lower zone here. We're letting it do its thing. And uh, we are talking about uh, about a week ago that we could come back down for a double bottom here, test these lows. Let's just uh, move in over here. Uh, I do feel as though we're in the late stages. I feel like this pullback right here we got a little a b c pullback we had similar pattern to that here we had an a b c a big pullback and then it started to firm up and then take off it seems like natural gas um, it's almost like this would be equivalent to where we got in last time right over here and we were under pressure for a few days some pretty heavy pressure and then of course it reversed and took off and i feel like that's what the market is doing here is really trying to carve out a bottom this type of price action where it has a sharp drop a bounce a huge sharp drop on a gap, a bounce. I feel almost as though this could make a new low, like three surges to a low, and that could be a very significant bottoming pattern uh, going forward. So we're going to let it continue to work itself out. Um, the last time we got in here, uh, I think both times we got in here, uh, we got in a little early. We got in on this bar, and we had to wait through about a week and a half and be under pressure for a while. Over here, we got in on what looked to be the start of a breakout, but it was still under the 20-day moving average, and our cycle hadn't fully reversed yet, and then we were under some pretty good pressure for a couple days before it started to move. So overall, we're going to let it do its thing. I would rather jump in and try and catch it as it's breaking out and catch this impulse wave right away versus um, ride out some of this downward bias. So we're going to let this momentum shift. We're still under the 20-day moving average. Our major cycle is still in the lower zone, meaning it's still powerful to the downside. And we're going to let it work itself out here before we uh, look to get long natural gas. Over at crude, uh, it's relatively flat on the session. Last trading session, it was down. Overall, it's testing this upper resistance zone we talked about, 62. And we could look for a potentially topping formation, maybe a little bear flag here. And it could be an opportunity for us to get into a small uh, inverse play back down to the lower end of uh, support. Um, it could come down to somewhere on this blue line. This next blue line will be the next support, and then the following one will be around here on this 51, which is uh, these two pivot lows and this uh, big sell-off down day as well. The 5150 area will be a fairly significant support zone. Anyways, that's really it for this morning, and I'll talk to you in a little bit. Bye-bye.